Hello, 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 hello. Binary stars. More than 50% of all stars in the sky are binary systems. Here is our system. One of the stars has a mass five times that of the Sun, the other one 20 times that of the Sun. We will take that the mass of the Sun is 2.00 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. It's the actual value is closer to 1.99, but this is fine. And the distance between our two stars is 10 to the 10 kilometers, 10 to the 30 meters. And they are in circular orbits. That's important to know. In this case, they are in circular orbits. So here you see the system. Here is M1, here is M2. And here is the center of mass. They both go around the center of mass. And when this one is here, the other one is there. And when this one is here, the other one is there. This is the radius of this orbit, R2, the distance to the center of mass. And this is the radius R1 of M1. R1 is four times larger than R2, because that's the way that the center of mass is defined. R1 times M1 is R2 times M2. We know the sum of the two is D, we know what D is, and so you find immediately that R1 is 8 times 10 to the 12 meters. The gravitational force on this star is in this direction, and on this star is the same magnitude in this direction. That force, F, is the gravitational attraction, which is M1 times M2 times the gravitational constant divided by D squared. This is D, from here to here. G, by the way, by now you should remember, or you can look it up, of course, that's perfectly okay. G in SI units, I even remember it, is 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11 in SI units. Now, since they are in circular orbits, this force here is the centripetal force on M1, and this force here is the centripetal force of M2. You could have picked M2, I picked M1, it makes no difference. The centripetal force on M1 is M1 V1 squared divided by R1. And that's equal to the gravitational force. You could have put in here M2 V2 squared divided by R2. Same thing. You would have found the same result. I work with M1. So, in this equation we know R1. We know M2, we know D, we know G, so we find that V1, the speed of M1, is 14.64 times 10 to the third meters per second. So 14.6 kilometers per second. The circumference here is 2 pi R1, and since it moves with the speed V1, the time that it takes to make one complete Rotation is 2 pi r1 divided by v1, and that I find then is 3.43 times 10 to the 9 seconds, which is about 109 years. Well, that was an easy problem, wasn't it? What I like about it, that there are two things from Newton, Newtonian mechanics that play a key role here. One, of course, is the gravitational attraction between two masses, and the other one is the concept of centripetal force. I'm very curious how many of you will do this right. I always take these things long before I post them. So as of this moment that I am recording it, I haven't seen any solutions yet. I'll make a rough guess. I expect 25% of the answers will be correct. <laughs> I hope I'm not wrong.
Okay? Have a nice day. Take care. And for sure, we will be friends.